Famature, hello and welcome to Keith's Whiskey Vlog. My name is Keith, aka Whiskey Tour Guide Keith. As well as my videos here, you can follow me on Instagram. I am looking forward to today's tasting. I am going to be tasting this little bottle for you, a nice little miniature. And it comes from the Outer Hebrides. The Outer Hebrides are off the west coast of Scotland. Almost like a sort of shield out between the mainland and the Atlantic. And my trusty whiskey tour guide Keith Pointer, these islands here. And this comes from the Avonjarig distillery, which is the most westerly distillery in Scotland. Are we over, where are we? Um, yeah, we're over here on the west coast. We're down here actually on the west coast of Lewis. Lewis is this island, the most northerly island in the Outer Hebrides. Now, Avonjarig opened in 2008, or started distilling in 2008. It's a very small distillery, I think it's the smallest by volume producer of single malt in Scotland. So in 2018, late 2018, they produced their first 10 year old. I've tried their 3 year old before, the first time I visited, and the Spirit of Lewis, which was their new make. I actually preferred the Spirit of Lewis to the 3 year old. Um, so very interested to see what the Avon Jarag 10 tastes like. Now, they are doing their best to create as good a spirit as possible, as good a whiskey. It's all made on the Isle of Lewis. It is made using barley grown on the Isle of Lewis and the age their, their, their whiskey in the distillery as well. The first time I went there, I did a little tour and um, I was being trained on the Isle of Lewis as a tour guide and the tour guide that took me was really worried that I, I wouldn't be very impressed, it's not very big, it's, it's not the greatest looking distillery, um, it's, it's, it's just a, a bit concerned at what I might think of it and I was totally taken by the place. Um, there are no signs telling you where to go and it is beyond the back of beyond and you've got to know where you're going and eventually you come over the crest of the hill and you can just see this little valley you've got the red river avon jarig in gaelic means red river in english so you've got this little river coming down and this sort of cluster of buildings a little wall round about it and just a sort of little plume of smoke peat smoke coming out and you can smell so very different distillery from your standard distilleries your big established distilleries your whitewashed distilleries doesn't look like a distillery. Even when you get there, there is a sign on the wall that says Avonjarig, the Red River Distillery, but you can't even really see it until you get quite close, about as close as I am to you now. So, a very interesting little place. They've got their own um, unique stills that they got made, um, custom made in the sort of, as far as they could tell, the classic Hebridean style. And uh, they've not got a malting floor, they've got a malting table. So really, really interesting place. I was completely taken by it. I love going there, taking guests and um, letting them taste the whiskey. When I did my little tasting, there was a, it was basically on a whiskey barrel out the back of the distillery, beautiful day, and there's a golden eagle swirling about above my head as I was doing the tasting. Now, no golden eagles today, but I don't really get many in my house. So, Avon Jarig, 10 year old. I'm going to read you what it says and then we will get on with the tasting. Nice little logo, you can see it maybe a little bit better on the top of the, the bottle there, uh, the, the box, and uh, just at the top of the box there. Nice feel for this box again. These things shouldn't mean anything, but uh, a little bit of nice packaging I think goes a long way. So, Avon Jarig, although it's D E A R G, you're, you're going to roll that R and the DEA is like a ja, so it's Jarig, Avon Jarig. Non chill filtered, 46%. Natural cask colour. Um, Avon Jarig Distillery was founded in 2008 and is the first distillery in the Outer Hebrides for almost 200 years. Although the history of distilling on the island is unclear, we are led to believe it to be the first legal distillery in the history of the Outer Hebridean Archipelago. Located in Uig, on the western edge of the Isle of Lewis, 
It is remote even by Hebridean standards and qualifies as being the most westerly distillery in Scotland. Everything about the, this distillery is unique, from its location to its stills. Avenjari goes back to the traditional ways of making spirit with malting barley grown locally. Produced, distilled and bottled in Uig from the Avenjarig Red River in English. This is a new chapter in distillery history. So if you're ever in the Outer Hebrides, Isle of Lewis, then um, it's well worth the long drive. The drive itself is worth it, just a very scenic, very remote. So uh, go and visit them, uh, take the tour, taste their whiskey. As well as this 10 year old, I think they're producing uh, 10,000 bottles of it in the first two years. Uh, been a small distillery and looking to have uh, 15 year old, 20 year old in a few years time. They're having to really manage their stock so they're limiting the amount. They did release, I think it was a single cask, uh, 10 year old, the first cask that they filled after distill distilling the first time and it's £475 a bottle. This is not cheap either, it's £79 a bottle, full size bottle. Um, so just basically there's, there's a premium on the amount of stock available. Um, I believe there'll be a little bit of peat smoke in here, a little bit of an earthiness and the whiskey was aged in bourbon barrels from Buffalo Trace uh, over in Kentucky, over in the US of A. Okay, Let's see if we can get into this one. Now on the bottle you can't really see it, I'll take a little picture and put it up on the screen for you. But there's a hairy coup on the front, looking at a whiskey barrel. And if I'm not mistaken, this will be Marco. Marco Taborn is the sort of head distiller, the owner of Avenjarig. And there's a big picture in the distillery of him on the beach with his favourite cow, favourite hairy coo. It's already, it's got a good strong smell about it already. Right, so, get a little glass. See what this is saying to it. So yeah, from memory, the three-year-old was very sweet. Give myself some of this for later. It's a decent drama. It's uh, 50 mils, 5 cl. There we go, how's that? Okay, so quite light in colour, it's the natural colour for the 10 year old bourbon cask, so it's going to be quite light, it's not going to be too dark. Um, I think the 3 year old, if I recall, was aged in sherry casks, but uh, as I say, this is just bourbon barrels. So, Let's see what it smells like. So just a little bit of smoke. It's quite malty. It's very fresh, very, very aromatic. It fills up your nostrils quite nicely, but not in a, not in a harsh way. It's quite soft. So quite light, quite sweet, and uh, you get the sort of the golden shimmer off it that gives you a little bit of honey flavour as well on the nose. When I say malty, it's almost a little bit biscuity, a little bit sort of digestive biscuits where I go. Really fresh, really quite interesting. Not as much smoke as I would expect, but just a little, a little, little tinge. Okay, let's have a little taste. So very similar, but a bit of honey, that sort of maltiness again, exactly what I was getting in the nose. A little bit of heat <coughs> as it goes down. Sweet honey, a little bit, I'm getting a little bit lemony, that sort of. Um, that sort of warm lemon, if you maybe have a lemon sip, 
It's a hot lemon. Not just as smooth as it smelt. Certainly a little bit of wood coming through, a bit wider, a bit lower, and that's a suck. A little bit dry. Very nice, very pleasant, very gentle. Yeah, more honey. The more that I drink it, the more honey. <clears throat> a little bit fruity, so just that. See a little bit of sort of hot lemon, maybe a little bit of grape, sort of white grape, but quite dry. So maybe grape juice as opposed to actual grape. Grapefruit maybe, that sort of tartness. Very interesting. A little bit of water, see what that does to it. Quite a long, quite a long linger. It's still, it's still, still there. It's still occupying. Not getting as much of the heat now. Just the strength in the mouth. Really quite interesting. Not right up my street normally, but quite happily enjoying it. So it's brought this sort of that maltiness down. There's almost a sort of mashed, wet, mashed, wet digestive biscuit. That sort of thing. Almost a little bit of brown sugar now. Or a medium amount of brown sugar. Certain sweetness, but... I wonder if I'm thinking coffee because of brown sugar, but who knows. A, a, a little bit of coffee chocolatey. Hot chocolate, maybe. Lovely, really nice. So, a little bit more chocolatey. A little bit more brown sugar on the nose with the water. Yep, it's really brought it down, calmed it down a little bit, not as much heat. A lot more sort of intense lemon now. There used to be a little cough sweet I got, it was quite a hard chewy lemon. You only have to chew it like sort of fruit gum like lemon. It's a bit more like that. It's that little bit of smoke, a little bit of earthiness. Not as much as I was expecting. The wood's still there. That's a bit more up in my mouth. Certainly still down here, the woodiness. But uh, very nice full flavour. Really interesting. I'm going to have to think about this one a lot more for quite a while. There you go, the Avon Jag 10 year old. Look out for it, not cheap. It will not be available in a lot of places. Um, if you are going to be looking for a similar experience, good grief. Um, something that's this sort of sweet and honey. I'm always going to talk about the Highland Park 12. So look out for that. Um, I've done a tasting video on the Glen Scotia 18 year old from down in Campbelltown, so the Glen Scotia 18, similar sort of ballpark. What else, maybe think about going over to Isla, where else am I going to go, And uh, but nothing too pungent, go for something like the, the classic Laddie from Brook Laddie would be another one. So the Highland Park 12, Glen Scotia 18 or the classic laddie from Brook Laddie on Isla. There's your three that I would put in the same sort of area, same sort of taste region. Okay, 
Well, I hope you enjoyed that, learned a little bit about Avangarig. If you ever get the chance, I cannot recommend visiting the Outer Hebrides enough, from Lewis all the way down to Barra, Vattersea, down the bottom. Um, some great islands, great culture, great history, beautiful scenery, and as well as Avangarig, quite soon we'll have some whiskey being produced at the Harris Distillery, the next island down from the Lewis. They're quite renowned for their gin at the moment. Okay, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, check out some of my other videos. Um, that just leaves me with uh, a little toast, so slanjava. Cheers. <laughs>